Okay. <laughs> okay. What I'd like to do is the next video, um, I forget how many minutes it is, not too long, but it's Olga Podorovskaya from the Ukraine. And I came across her about uh, in 2011, uh, and she would do, she is um, the founder of Breatharian World. It's on her, I think that's the name of her website. And, and she would do uh, conferences uh, every year in the Ukraine. And I think she probably still does. That. I haven't followed her for a long time. This is an older interview with her. And I just uh, took half of that interview uh, because she gets into discussing how the chakras, the energy vortexes, uh, in our bodies, the seven chakras, uh, how they, uh, what happens when you go through this uh, process. And uh, so let's get into that now. Okay. And what I think is interesting about her too, is she's a very uh, large woman. So we automatically think, you know, breatharians or those that live on prana, they are, um, you know, wafer thin people and all this, but her a uh, body type is one that's very uh, broad. Uh, she's, you know, a very big woman. Okay. So, uh, and this video, she's not as large, but I saw uh, more recent ones and she's a good sized woman, but, you know, and I don't know uh, if she's at level four, level three, you know, she may consume some food, but we'll, we'll just uh, listen to what she has to say about the chakras in this one. Olga, please tell us about Breatharian lifestyle. Uh, because many people know that uh, Breatharianism is possible, but people uh, don't understand what actually Breatharian do in a daily life and what the difference uh, between uh, living without food and living with food. Thank you. Yes, this is a very interesting question because normally people just ask uh, is Breatharianism possible or not and what is it? Breatharianism is dynamic lifestyle. Everything always changing. Uh, when you eat nothing uh, for a month you feel some certain things. But when you go further uh, everything is changing. Sometimes you don't want to sleep. You can uh, be uh, free from sleep and from tiredness for several days. You get a lot of free time because at first you don't waste your time to cooking food. food and the second is that uh, you become free from all problems and troubles which are related to food. You become very calm. Sometimes you go through some specific energy processes and you may feel some problems. After some time you feel better. Breatharianism is not only living without food, it's fundamental transformation of the physical and psychic and energy bodies. When you don't eat first couple of months, you feel deeply your energy body. Then your chakras start to open and depending on uh, what chakra is opening, you may feel different emotions. When your first chakra is opening, your social life is changing. When your second chakra is opening, your not sexual but biological uh, life start to change. When you go to third chakra, you learn to work with your will. The word work may be not good, but it's like you start to understand where you should focus on and where to not. And the next step is opening of heart chakra. And this is really amazing. You feel unconditional love to anybody, to everything. And you really feel that this world is amazing. This world is just a world of love, love and 
this is just heaven and you want to share this knowledge you want to keep in touch with people and try to help them you try to help this world and change this world you feel really unconditional love when energy go to third chakra you become more um, self-centered you become uh, more serious you uh, start uh, to uh, to be to be a uh, more focusing maybe on results when energy goes to sixth chakra you um, change your mind concepts you change your relationships with the external world with circumstances with this reality when you finally get seventh chakra you got you get the realization that you are actually the emptiness some concepts are showing up but you don't trust them you just watch them you just absorb all emotions feelings thoughts you stop to trust to reality and go to, to the stage when you can say that I know nothing. All I can do is just to perceive. I do have to apologize to uh, some of you because uh, you may not know about the chakras in the body, <laughs> the energy. You know, Dave does, Kelly does, because, you know, and I do because of Reiki. Um, uh, Shima, do you know about the chakras in the body? Little. I know that chakras are basically transformers and they provide food for our mental body and emotional body. Um, so that's how I like how much I know about it. Uh, in Halgam um, system, we believe it has nothing to do with any kind of awareness that we do and it's mostly just transformers of energies. So it was interesting to me that she was actually mentioning that, um, like all those stages that she went through. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh, Dave, did you want to talk a bit about the chakras uh, for viewers? And I think when I actually post this video, I'll show a chart and I'll, I'll describe each chakra uh, as she's speaking. Uh, so it's more detailed for uh, viewers. Um, my experience is just that in you know practice and meditation i can i can concentrate on the you know the chakras but i'm i mean that's a good model to sort of get into understanding energy systems in your body um but i don't yeah i i don't really think in terms of that anymore i don't concentrate on the chakras but it was a, an important uh, starting point and I think I just uh, kind of it, and I know I'm not sure it's my version of mindfulness I'm just list, I'm just feeling and paying attention to how energy is is, uh, is in my body uh, things coming in from outside or you know just how these energies are moving so uh, what she talks about um, reminds me of a fair bit of some Buddhist practice and especially tantric uh, practice and, and how to how your awareness of, of energy in your body moves and and how, you know, that takes you can take you to uh, a bigger or a wider perspective or connects you to a higher consciousness. And uh, I know, you know, we've been going for a while. So what I'd like to do now, this is the longest uh, uh, video, and this is about the festival. Mm -hmm. And so I'm hoping, you know, Kenny and Ryan, that you uh, maybe pick up, you know, some little gems from this, uh, because the, I, what I did is I took clips of some of the things that the participants said and their experiences and and some of the talks that were given at this festival in Italy in 2019. And it's the Breatharian, uh, it's the Prana Festival, I think it's called, their Breatharian uh, World Festival. 
Uh, so uh, let's look at that right now. And uh, in this, by the way, too, um, the woman who narrates parts of it will talk about uh, the different levels that people are at. So it may, um, uh, there may be someone speaking on the stage and they have their name and then they'll say level three or something like that. Okay. All right. Yep. Breatharians are people who have activated the capacity to sustain themselves without food or very little. This is not fasting, weight loss or healing. This is a lifestyle choice of being nourished by the universal energy, also known as prana, chi, light or love. I can consider myself a third level. Sometimes I eat, I can stay a month without, and then I eat once. So to me, to become pranic, it's a natural, slow process, a process of liberation. Where my, my body literally started to break away. One side of my body was crumbling, half of my face, like the side of the cliff was crumbling away and I was terrified and it just continued and continued until there was nothing of me left. I, I didn't exist in form but I was still in my static posture but it was my consciousness that was holding me together. I had no form and this would happen over and over again in my static postures um, until Again, I was able to locate my form, but it was in a more refined state. And then I learned how to journey into my body, in through my veins, in through certain organs. So I was inside looking, in my organs looking out. So I went through this deep breakdown of my personal self, um, which brought me into my consciousness self for my light body. I was born in 1972 in Dublin and um, I lived in, in Wicklow, in the Wicklow Mountains. And then I moved uh, to the south of Ireland. And this is where I, um, I began to have a communication with nature spirits at a very young age, maybe three years old. And um, I had one experience that I remember. And I remember looking in the sky and seeing this, what I thought was the sun coming down. And the sun just kept coming down, coming down, coming down until it was over me. and. Um, and the next thing I was lifted into the sun. And I don't remember anything after that. And after this experience, I began to yeah, start seeing different beings and uh, mostly in nature. Really, I just came for the experience, that's it. Um, I didn't really expect anything. But I just came for the experience because I knew it was going to be awesome. Uh, if it would not be awesome, all right, that's an expectation, I guess. But I just, I felt like this is, I want to experience more about this certain subject. And I thought this is a good place to go. Mm -hmm. Because I don't even have to integrate myself. I'm already just being here. That, that gets the job done. Yeah. And life is actually a journey from this illusion which we call reality back to reality which we call now illusion <laughs> and this is a spiritual journey in which spiritual warriors need to recognize their own limiting patterns for a clear understanding of how this energy nourishes us and how it can be observed in people, we use these four levels. Level one, 
is to be aware of this energy. Level two is to begin experiencing more of this energy. The work of a spiritual warrior is wonderful, but difficult at the same time. It depends upon you how much you are ready to look into yourself. Level three is to manifest the breatharian state only occasionally consuming solid foods or liquid. Level four is to manifest the breatharian state and no longer having calorie intake. Usually, level three and four are recognized as breathing. Universe love you, also I. <laughs> when I was a kid, um, so many things were happening. I am a twin. I have a twin sister. And because of that, I learned about duality very early and telepathically wisdom also the telepathically technique how to catch it what you are thinking what you are what you what you wish and my father always said to me guess my thoughts and uh, i was surprised and he was surprised that i catch it <laughs> And uh, I was very sensitive. I couldn't eat m uh, more, um, f a lot. And um, sometimes I um, said to me, to myself, oh, it will be very, very beautiful and nice if you don't need to eat. And sometimes, and after, after three decades, it happened. As time went by, we, we, uh, we see that there's a weight around and we don't realize where this weight comes from. And so my father has this notion of time and space that because... So I'm going to use the words that needed to well understand we are drugged from our very young age, at least in this society, by food that has an effect, a direct effect on the being. Personally, my body started to deform itself at the age of eight. I had photos of eight of me when I was eight. I was already over overloaded. So already at this age, it was uh, it was going left and right. We're not in our center. My name is Fernanda. I live in Switzerland with my parents. Uh, my mother is English Scottish, and my father is Swiss Brazilian. And uh, it's the second time I come here. I came last year already, and I love it. I just love this uh, this place already. The place is amazing, and to uh, meet other people. Uh, my name is Luca. I come uh, from uh, Serbia. I am uh, helping in camping area uh, because I like the domestic feel. When I arrive at the festival and I help the building, and then people come, and I, I like this kind of feeling. So I'm Anna, and at the moment I live in Mechelen. It's a little city in the north of Belgium. I arrived yesterday and I already had a few wonderful talks to people who are on the same path of that pranic living and it's wonderful to share experiences about, about that and to recognize also that we are on the same path that's uh, very supporting. It is the third time I am here from the beginning <laughs> with my family my sister Simona also helps to organize this festival and we are here from the first year my name is uh, Amael, I'm from Portugal and I'm here for the second time. This is for public actually, it's for people who just hear about it, heard about it and just can come here to have some information. So people uh, don't come here to do a process 
and we have some uh, raw food, uh, vegan food, and veget vegetarian food uh, for people to enjoy because they need to keep their level of energy and it's a place to take information, yeah, 10 days of information. We started first edition with five days and uh, there were a lot of speakers. We have a free conference, free talks a day. And uh, I said to myself, I need to extend the time because there are so many people who want to talk. And so the second uh, edition was eight days. And now we're on 10 days. So it's like, um, we don't know how many days it will last in next year. Probably we won't go back because there's more and more people want to talk. Because there are more and more Brazilian blooming, flowering in the world. But the thing is that you want to enjoy both worlds, enjoy all the advantages, all the advantages of being a breatharian and all the advantages of eating occasionally. But all you have to remember is that there is a reason that you chose to do that. And it's beyond yourself. We are all here to serve humanity. We are here to show that we can think differently. Più a connettermi a quello che io chiamo il grande cervellone. I can always, I'm always more able to connect with what I call the big brain. Questo grande cervellone è come un grande contenitore. This big brain is like a big box. È la grande coscienza. It's the big consciousness. Attraverso essa sento le risposte. Through this I feel, I perceive the answers. Ecco che cresce la fede, la fiducia. So faith and trust grow. So che tutto ciò che vivo è I, giusto. I know that all that I experience is right. My name is Ivan Gossi. Oh, Ivan Gossi. Uh, I'm from uh, Czech Republic, but uh, yeah, it's not really easy to, to live in spiritual way in Western society, so yeah, I, I feeling like I just came to my family here. Like everybody here is, everybody is here so friendly. Everybody is hugging, and people are people are really great here. I'm here two two hours, but I feeling like I know everyone here. If you read my CV on the web, uh, on the on the Pranic Folk Festival website, uh, you. Um, could learn that I've been scientist for over 30 years. I'm university professor of physics. Nuclear physics is my specialty, nuclear and quantum. To demonstrate, I, I created a little closed system for you. This is a little, um, how do you call it? Board. Board, yeah. Imagine this is one of you, and I put you in under the glass bell in a closed system everything will stay inside the system and the mass will always be the same always 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 day two three four five ten hundred days a month whatever the mass will not change okay is is that a common sense he will not gain the weight but what is happening with real Breatharian level four and level three is that the mass is going up. What I can do, I can do many crazy things. So I'm a little bit different than, than other people. And normally I don't sit high. I always sit low. Of course, you can say that, okay, sit on the, the floor on the carpet. So this is more comfortable. So, but normally I don't sit up. Many who knows me want me to be their guru, but I don't want to do that. So I tell lies sometimes, so they cannot trust me. Because they should not trust me. They should trust themselves. Uh, believe in yourself, not in everybody else. Trust your intuition. Always be a good example for everybody. Especially yourself. So always follow intuition and do it as pure as possible. Of course you can be strange 
in others eyes yeah so what just do anyway just be yourself okay and here I, I find uh, I meet pranic people they inspire me but also the the visitor here the people coming there all have uh, very profound uh, history story and uh, mm, I, I receive I receive I receive I receive I receive I get m much more than I, I can expect much more the reason I'm here for the pranic world festival is that um, I'm also living in light and I have done so for five years now. But again, we live in a society where there's food everywhere and friends and family do not live like this. So what I really like about this is that I can choose to go just on water for a few days if I want to. And I can also go visit my father for Christmas and go to my aunt's birthday and still eat and be normal with these people. I don't have to make it into something crazy or special for that birthday or something. So I'm still with one leg in two camps in between. And when I don't eat and drink, I sleep five hours in one week. Try to imagine that I don't sleep, I don't get tired. What should I do with all my time? <laughs> because everybody else is sleeping. Nobody is doing stuff. <laughs> so I'm just alone and just, yeah, okay, then I can sit and just watch and then, yeah, but it, it becomes boring. We are made of energy. Our body is made of atoms. And all around us, there are atoms and we are just, we're just in it. It's just happening now. It's just that when we eat too much, we lower down our frequency, we lower down our, our vibration, and then we, our organs yeah, inside our body becomes to get tired because it's to work every day, because we are filling it with food, and we don't always have a young body, and it creates a lot of fatigue, a lot of, and this is what creates people to get old and to get ill and eventually to die before their time. Yes. A lot of peace, a lot of joy and sharing. So it's nice. So I don't know how people should eat, but I know that for me, eating once, twice a week is wonderful. I never had so beautiful en energy. And I can do a lot of things and I'm feeling quite healthy and I'm 47 now and and this is what I'm sharing. I think um, the future is really nice for human civilization. It's going to be a new, new world and uh, there will be a lot of space. Animals will come back, nature will come back. Uh, cities will work differently, uh, will not be consuming so much, so nature will take back and be, will, will clean everything naturally. So there's a lot of um, Mm. not hope it's gonna happen I'm pretty sure because I'm doing it for centuries for thousands of years we've been people uh, in all kinds of religions have been fasting you know and we're talking about this the spirit is the energy so oily spirit it means clean it means oily it's not it's not uh, it's clean so to clean up the body you just need to reduce the amount of food you take in and slowly you clean your body and the spirit becomes clean your spirit your action your energy the prana the chi flows better call them chakra call them energy call it kundalini call it pranic energy and you start to feel better day after day just by 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 reducing the density so here we are Humanity thinks it's the food that sustains the body. Instead, breatharians are showing another reality. Did you really hear them? We are talking 
about men and women who are not drinking or eating, even for decades, in good physical and mental health. They live normal lives in the countryside or city, raising families and doing any kind of work. This documentary was recorded in Kokore, Italy, where every year in June, breatharians meet at the Pranic World Festival. Is everyone still with us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Survivors. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, uh, any comment? I have any. one. It appears that we're not finished. One night was not enough. <laughs> you know, I was thinking that too. Yeah. Right? I agree. Yeah, it's it's, it's a big it's, topic. It's a big topic. Yeah. 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 It is. And what I'd like to do, I'm one who likes to do experiments. And uh, so I'd like to get some instruction on this and some counseling or whatever it is to learn it and, and, and try it, see what happens. Yeah. I do have um, The Food of the Gods by uh, Jasmine Heen. I also have, and she actually, this is one of her older books, but I have her Luscious Lifestyle one where she you know sets it out and it's a gradual process as well i also wanted to go um to this because i know some of you like kenya and that like the science right and uh because uh olga was talking about the chakras uh i got my uh copy of hands of light which um, is a book that was written in the 80s by barbara ann brannan and that's my copy Oh, it's your copy. Sorry. <laughs> uh, mine must be somewhere. And uh, anyway, uh, Barbara M. Brandon was a physicist for NASA. And she eventually left NASA to start hands-on healing. And she trains people on hands-on healing. And so what I, uh, why I pulled it out is, if you remember, Olga was talking about the chakras and what she was talking about uh, were these vortices uh, the seven main ones, though we have them everywhere. We have them in our hands, our feet, and other parts of our bodies. Uh, and, uh, and as you're saying, Shima, they do connect to other energy bodies, right? Uh, so just so you see the diagram here. So when she was describing, you know, the stages that we go through, she was starting from the root one and working up to the crown. Okay, and I will put an illustration of this uh, with her video. Any other uh, comments? Lion? I have a comment. Uh, the point is when I saw this documentary, I remember the call. I saw two, three documentary, but I forget the name. The guy was from US and they took the people going to make a paradise in, I'm not sure which, country in South America and the people is died by the suicide themselves. Oh you this is this reminded you of that? Yes. Oh and, and James Jim you know, Jim Jones. Well that, yes. Yeah. Oh yeah, like mean, a cult. Oh yeah. like, yes. it's like a cult. cult. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Oh. Another thing there is one cult in Japanese they call Om. I don't know. Have you ever heard about that? Hmm. The people is doing the same thing. Oh yeah, I have heard of those groups. Well, I forget the name of the the first person. Sawashi is something. I am not. I don't know exactly the name. The same yeah. things. They said that the love in the beginning, but the end, they make it like a hate and killing to people by the name of the love. And all of the religion, I think, when they talking is different from the reality. Um, there are some people, because uh, we're talking about a cult. No, no, not just people, the yeah. groups, the cult. They said based in the love, you know, the humanity, this love, 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 but they actually when they come to reality, they hate, they killing by the name of, by the name of the God, by the name of the Jesus, mm -hmm. by the name of the mm -hmm. Muslims, you know. 
Yeah. Um, can I say something for sure, religion? Um, and this is something that Master Tari said about religion, that it's like that the spring water and the mountain, that, so that's where the religion usually originated, where whatever it's like with Jesus or with Judaism, with Islam, and that's pure, pure water. And then it's just kind of getting to the path, coming down, down the mountain, to the, to the city, to the streets, and then to the sewage. And then that's the same water still that's it's up there but then it just came down all these paths and then all these things has happened to it and then we look at the switch and we're just disgusted by it but it's the same water up there so that's religion so like we're starting to uh and i'm not a religious person at all i'm just it was a very because i was also very against a lot of things in religion and that really sits with me in a way that it was really pure in the beginning, but then people came and then they being selfish and start to using it in the, for their own benefit. And then, then people, then us, then we hate those people. And then because they were using religion, then we, we hate religion. But um, I think um, it's, not that like um, we, we have to respect it or not, but I think there are good things in it and there are things that maybe we can um, discuss it or we don't like it and that's fine, but I don't think that, um, um, yeah, it's it's just a water analogy. It, it, I think it just says it perfectly. <clears throat> it does, yeah. Yeah, and it's, uh, and, and you know, that things get perverted happens, people's, you know, uh, they get taken over by their whatever, who knows what happened to Jim Jones and all these other people. But the, one of the things that I come to mind is you can tell the, like, basically the quality of the tree by the fruit, right? So this analogy is what, you know, if indeed you were to follow this path and you had nothing but misery and problems and somebody trying to control your life instead of enhance it and you could tell this is not a good tree this is a good fruit to be eating or you know so i mean it's uh, if you have doubts about this uh like ken kenny's willing to experiment and try it and see what happens um and then yeah and and it's the same as uh like the buddha said don't don't uh, trust me. You got to find it for yourself. You, you know, so uh, if this interests you, if there's some, you know, uh, something, you know, that might enhance your path by looking into this, and that great, you'll be able to know. And the one guy in the video, in the documentary said, don't trust me, trust yourself. So, you know, that doesn't sound like somebody trying to control uh, your life. They're just trying to help you along, perhaps. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, you know, uh, Lion, I think, too, we have to look at, does the technology around us control our thoughts as well, right? Because uh, when I um, watched that documentary and I was editing it, I saw people who had, they had broad experiences. They had independent thought. But when you look at uh, society around us, you find that a lot of us think alike. And that's why we have strong reactions when people introduce something uh, that's uh, unfamiliar to us, right? It, can, it comes across to us to be quite strange. Um, one more thing. I think life is very short to experience everything. Uh, and the point is this time, a lot of information and to choose one of them is very difficult and follow one of the path. It is, and as Dave said that, maybe you are following and you see that is wrong way and you don't have a time to go back and start again from the beginning. You know, I know we're, we've been uh, talking about uh, living on people living on prana and that but it's interesting line you said we live very short lives 
And I think one thing that uh, we've been conditioned to believe is that um, we live you know, longer lives than those in the past. And as I start to explore more and more what's going on in the world and alternative uh, lifestyles and that, I'm starting to learn that there are people on this planet living very long lives beyond what we've been conditioned to believe, uh, you know, the average person lives. So, uh, you know, that is an area that I hope in the future uh, to cover that topic. Uh, because I did have a friend uh, who's originally from Africa. You know, uh, he hadn't been back to his village in Nigeria in 35 years. And he went back uh, several years ago. And I saw him when he came back. And, you know, he got to visit his mother and you know, all his, you know, family and neighbors and all that. And he and I got into this discussion about you know age and that and he said Diane there's a man in my village that is 165 years old and I said like Abraham he said yes and he said he could outrun you and I <laughs> right and he said even the young guys in the village tease him say like when are you gonna you know die whatever right you <laughs> know but he said, you know, he says he's healthy, he's alert, right? So again, these are things about, this is why I started expanding your consciousness because there's a lot out there that, you know, we are not introduced to. And, uh, you know, people talk about secret societies and I do think there are secret societies and the purpose of secret societies is to keep secrets from the general population, right? So what they do with television and all this technology around us is they keep us like horses with blinders on, right? So they don't want us to see certain things. They keep us distracted just in, in this narrow frequency of visible light. So. And just like, uh, just to your point, Diane, um, human being is as vast as the whole universe and um to, there, there are people who just for their benefit or whatever they want us just to t think in a certain way or behave in a certain way and just not to see all this and um i think to the least it actually like what we saw today it uh it can help us see the alternative and to me this alternative is a lot more beautiful and what I see around me, we just eat, eat, eat fast food, it's like those ads in TV. <laughs> and I probably would never try it, but it is at least more beautiful than what I see around me. So um, I, I think it's, uh, it's important to um, have that non-judgmental uh, view towards it. And uh, I do want to ask Sarah, Sarah, do you have any uh, comments before we finish? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. No, uh, great conversation. It's fun to just kind of follow along and see what everybody has to say. And Lion, I really appreciate your feedback, actually, mm -hmm. right? Because it is a big shift for people to think differently, right? So uh, anyway. Yeah, uh, I think I, we'll finish. it's been a long like night. To, I'd like to, you know, thank Sarah for, you know, her presence yeah. as well to mm -hmm. actually, you know, talk to somebody or listen to somebody who's actually uh, been there for a while. Yeah, and, man. Uh, and, and what I will be doing is putting the links to the longer versions of these videos uh, in the descriptions of the videos. So I'll have the shorter clips I did, uh, but then the longer ones uh, with the details. I'll have Olga's uh, website posted, Jasmine, of course, uh, and others. If Michael Warner has one, I'll, I'll post that as well. Uh, and yeah, I, thank you for joining us. Uh, it's a fascinating topic. And yeah. uh, Kenny, maybe we do have to do more on it. Kenny, you have anything? Yeah. 
we've got lots to go here. Just yeah. in honor of, of what Lion said there, I think the first thing I'm going to cut out of my diet is Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> and on that, I think we'll go. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. That was at Woodstock. I drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Good going night. to stop to eating and drinking. I'm not going to do that. 100% sure. Uh, enjoy your meals, Lion. Like I yeah, <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.